What's good guys? Welcome back to Lion Mag TV. So you got eyes all know that Mr. Ibu passed away some days ago. Now a lot of controversy, a lot of issues about his properties and all of that has been ongoing. Well, before he passed on, the last person he actually sent a message to was Root Boy. Yes, Root Boy, one of the P-Square video and yeah, I'll be playing you that video as well. Then Jasmine's made a lot of review about what is currently going on concerning his property and as well i will share you a little highlight of when he had a wonderful time with um vodi one of the best african leading tellers in abuja here's the all of the highlight please anyone you find interesting ensure to drop a comment as we are going to make another video concerning that enjoy the video Good guys boy. oh god i don't know where to start my language but everything happens exactly on God's own time. When the time comes, it has come. Good boy, if you not go to heaven, call me Nama. You will go to heaven and I will sit down in the presence of the angels who we'll eat together. And with the heaven and make them a your life will never change. What we will be talking about today is how come, how come, people and uh, be square. They are not the same parents. When I tell you, parents don't go. Hi everyone. As you all know, my name is Lady Jasmine C. And today I want to say thank you to everybody most of all those who had faith in me who believed in me who patiently waited till this day for me to come and speak on behalf of myself to all the good nigerians out there who during this trying period showed their immense support by checking up on me calling to know how i'm doing i want to say thank you to everybody so today i'm going to be talking about what has transpired this entire time the past three months has been i can't say it has been hell but in every situation i want to say i want to give thanks to god i said i was not gonna talk about this issue until that it gets back to his feet and glory be to god he's been discharged and recuperating um a lot has happened not just the event of the past few months, a lot has happened, and I would like to share more light on how I got involved, how things got to this point. And I'm not talking because I need people to sympathize with me. No, that's not the essence of this. I'm talking because I feel like I have been abused, I have been used. And I hope you guys are patient enough to at least listen to the entire story. Because it means a lot to me for people to know what really transpired, what really happened. Then if after listening to me, you feel like, oh, I'm wrong. Fine. I'll, let, I'll leave the judgment to you people. So how did I get involved in all this in the first place? Um... Firstly, how did I get involved with this family? The John Okafor family, Mr. Ibu family. The first and most important question I get all the time from people, mostly on my comment section is, oh, don't she have a family? Don't she have parents? Uh, leave this family alone and all of that. I would like to start addressing from those kind of comments. So many years ago, my dad passed on me, so rest in peace. He was in Nigerian army. He was a very good friend to Mr. Ibu, who is now a father figure in my life. When my dad passed on, Mr. Ibu himself was at the barrier. Ever since then, he has played the role of a father figure in my life. Not for once have I ever needed somebody as a father that he was not there for me so 
Fast forward to 2018, I left the country. I left Nigeria. And then I went to look for greener pasture outside the country. Things were working out for me. I was doing good. I was doing fine. Later on, I relocated to Cyprus where I was studying law. Fast forward to 2020, Daddy started, Daddy, in person of Mr. Abel, started writing me on WhatsApp, requesting for financial assistance. I was really surprised because before I left this country, he was doing well. If not, if he wasn't at the peak of his career, he was doing absolutely well. He has exotic cars. Everything was okay for him. So in 2020, when he started reaching out to me, that he needed money for certain things, I was really surprised. Certain times I would send 50,000, 5,000, 2,000, as much as I can. I have friends then in Cyprus that can attest to it. I think I have one friend, Ventura, another friend, Otonye. These are people I know that can attest to it because then, even when I don't have as much, I would borrow from them or I would get from them to send to him. So at some point, it was getting, it was quite disturbing because I know when I left this country, he was doing very, very okay. I started asking questions. I asked him what exactly is happening in your life right now for you to be asking for the least 50,000, 10,000, 5,000. Are you sure everything is okay? That was the first time he mentioned to me that he was sick and he was in Abuja. I then asked him, how about your wife? How is the children? How is everybody doing? It's been long since I heard from any of them. He said, ah, his wife is in, um, his wife is in Lagos. He has been in Abuja for close to two years now. And I was like, if you're sick, the best place to be is your home in Lagos. Why Abuja? He didn't really say much. So I told him to send me his wife's number that I would like to hear from her. It's been a while. I'd like to hear from her. Let me know what's happening in, in their life and all of that. Let me also understand why he was asking for those kind of financial help if things has really gotten that bad. Because it's, I was in shock. It also surprised me. So he later sent her number. I called her. I asked her how she was doing. She said everything was not well. I could remember that day. She, the first day I contacted her after a very long time, she said everything is not well, that her husband has left the house for over two years. He has abandoned the children and everything. I was surprised to hear that from her. And then she said that, that that very day, she started sending me videos. I think the last time they called me out that I was on um, that the freeze life, I made reference to that. And I'm sure those evidence will still be on the live because I've changed my phone several and my phone formatted. So I might not have some of those evidence. But I still know that if I go to my iCloud, I will still see some of them, which I'll be posting while the, the live, the video goes on. So around that period... She was crying over the phone when I asked her how things were going. She said um, that daddy in person of Mr. Ibu has left the house for over two years, abandoned her with the kids, that things were really bad for her. Even that day, she sent me a video of um, Nepal people cutting the light as of when I called her. The Nepal people were there. She went to her car. She showed me her car, that there was no fuel in her car. Her car was in a very bad condition. That in fact, that if I don't intervene, no, 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 no. The Nepal people will cut the light and there will be no light for the uh, uh, There will be no light in the house. And the children were drinking Gary. That there was no food in, in the house for the children. That they were drinking Gary. That things are causing real bad. That since that he was in Abuja, he was not really in a very good state to help them and support her and for her she's not doing any work she, she according to her she, she married him she has not had, had any job she has not done anything she has no means of sustaining the family i mean she totally depends on him to be able to sustain the family and pay school fees for the children so i said okay ah me i'm in cyprus though. i'm studying i showed her some of my school stuff i'm studying law this is where i am we're trying to catch up with each other and i told her this is where i am right now but i'll try and see if i can raise at least hundred thousand and send to her so that she can sort out the little she can solve she said okay that day i sent her hundred thousand the proof of that is what the proof of that hundred thousand i sent her is in the live video i the previous live video i did with daddy freeze I sent her hundred thousand naira. She called me. She thanked me. She said that hundred thousand will go a very long way for her. I said okay. Subsequently, I will keep in touch. 
That was my first encounter with her after a very long period of time. But that was my first time talking to her after a very long period of time. After like after I left the country and everything. So from there she started chatting me every day. We were we were talking. Subsequently she would send me for every single time we were having conversation. It was about the issues in the house and all of those things. And, and at the point, she started complaining to me that she's not able to reach daddy on the phone, in person of Mr. Ibu, that when she calls him in Abuja, he doesn't pick and all of that. So she asked me to call daddy on her behalf and talk to daddy that daddy should um, send something for her and the kids. And I've been supporting her in the little way I can during that period. My friends in Cyprus, I have, I can, I can call their names here. I'm sure they, most of them are still alive, although I've not in contact with some of them because I've left Cyprus for a while. They, they are aware, some of them are aware because when I don't have, I'll ask my friend, oh, please help me. I want to send, they know, they know how close I was to the family and how I have, I, how I was always concerned about the family. So at one point I said I was coming back to Nigeria because at that point I was um, dating someone and we're talking about getting married. So I had a reason to come to Nigeria and I told her, I said, look, I'm coming to Nigeria. When I come to Nigeria, we sit down and talk. They will know how to solve some of all these issues that is going on, you know. So, I was also talking to daddy's son, Valentine, that was in South Africa. I was talking to so many people in the family that, that period. So, when I came back to Nigeria, I was supposed to come to Lagos. In fact, she was supposed to meet me at the airport, but she couldn't meet up. And then, I told her I was going straight to Abuja. I traveled with one other lady, one of their family friends. So we went to Abuja. On getting to Abuja, Daddy was really sick. He was really, really sick. That was the first video that went viral on social media that was giving him medicine. I said, Daddy, take this medicine, take the medicine. I am sure I'll put it on the screen during the course of the video. So Daddy was really sick. The condition I met him was really bad. I have a lot of videos we made that day. Asking what was happening. He said he's really down for the past two years. He don't know what is happening. I said, why haven't you gone home if things are really that bad? Go home and stay with your wife. At least she will take care of you. Now that you are here in this hotel, the name of the hotel he was then was Nana Suit. You people can go and find out how, how long that he stayed in Nana Suit. I know I heard when I came, I heard he lived in so many hotels in Abuja before finally living in Nana Suit. I'm sure people, people that are watching this video, some people will be able to go there and make inquiries. It was in Nana Suit Hotel that I went and found that in. So in that Nana Suit Hotel, there are some other people that were there, some other actors. During the course of this video, I'll be mentioning some names. So if, if there's anything I'm saying that is lie, people can go and make inquiries. You know, I didn't want to come and say anything, but I've, it's, it, the things, things have gotten to the part where I have to speak up and I have to speak up my truth. I have to say my truth the way it is. That is the essence of telling this story. The way it is, if after knowing my truth, you people still deem it fit to condemn me, it's fine. But at least let it be that I, sp I speak. Let it be that I said something. Let it be that I stood up for myself. So, when I arrived at that Nana Hotel with that, with this, the lady, that is a family friend to, to them, that he was really sick. Then I did a video of him being sick and I put it on social media. That video caught the attention of, of so many ni good Nigerians. And then people started reaching out. And what's happening to Mr. Ebu? It's been so long we heard about Mr. Ebu. What's happening to all our old our, our, our old Nollywood actors? We haven't been seeing Mr. Ebu. Nobody has been hearing about him for a while now. And there were some good people that were around him around that period. They knew he was sick, but they didn't know he was that bad. Benedict Johnson, a Nollywood actor, was there. Labista was there. There's one other man. I don't really know him mutually but i met him there it was one of the people that was helping him then and bala mr bala they had a program running one, po one po a political party program that was running on that period i can't really say much about it because i came and met met them in the middle of it in fact i later found out that they were the one even sustaining his hotel bill his food and everything so when they saw that video they rushed they came and the johnson came over labista came over and some some people in nollywood they came over and immediately, it wasn't up to an hour, let me say an hour, 30 minutes, they rushed him to the hospital. They rushed him to the hospital, Zenith, uh, Medical, Zenith Kidney and Medical Center. When they took him to the hospital, I believe ben Benedict Johnson, by the grace of God, 
he's alive and healthy he knows most of he he, he should be able to relate to most of the things i'm going to say during this period in abuja they took him to the hospital the doctor saw that they they saw his former medical reports from the previous hospital he was and they, they, what the doctor said that they i won't forget he said if this medical report that they came with is the state of him of daddy right now that i means things are really bad and then i can remember then the, if the people that were there can attest to the father that he was saying that is near that is near that is near i was rebuking him i said that is not near you're not dying you're not dying anytime soon so the hospital they started they said they had to make a deposit of a particular amount of money Benedict Johnson and Labista ran, were running around with some other people, the Bala man, they were running around, they were able to raise a certain amount of money and then they made deposit at that hospital, Zenith Hospital. So they started checking that I cannot actually give details of his medical condition because I feel like that those are things that are actually personal to him that I can actually say to some extent the medical the medical condition was really bad it wasn't a very good report so they started checking him all over they had to admit him they admitted him in that hospital for at least three months and the people that took care of the bill that time as far as i know was that um, group of people that were sustaining him at that um, hotel so when i came the first thing i asked i called the wife i said look i'm here at the hospital in abuja the condition is really bad if it's possible for you to come, come. She now said ah, that she doesn't have transport, or that she doesn't have money for flight, she can't come, that they said we're going to arrange money for her to come and all of that. I said, okay. So I spoke to daddy. I said, eh, we need to find a way for your wife to come so that she can actually take care of you. 